first and foremost, let me just <clears throat> address this pastorally. If you are struggling with infertility, we want you to know we're so sorry about that. I can't imagine what that is, is like. Uh, we have experienced it a little bit in our family generally. Uh, but, and we've walked with friends that have gone through uh, a difficulty getting pregnant or even an inability to be pregnant. And I want you to know God cares. God sees you, we see you, we pray with you, we stand with you. And <clears throat> it's very difficult for people who have not experienced it to really understand the full, the pain points of that. And so we want you to just know that. Um, I think that when we think about family and we think about life and we think about birth and pregnancy, we need to take that very soberly because it is sacred. And unfortunately, in our culture, we don't view life, the womb, conception, things like uh, birth control, things like uh, family, and even the, the subject of abortion. We don't think of these as being sacred issues in the sight of God. We think of them as being freedom issues in the sight of man. And we need to recognize that the Bible, or the Bible says that our bodies are a temple to the Holy Spirit. So what we do with our bodies really does matter because our bodies are sacred, life is sacred. And so when it comes to something like IVF, that's relatively new. You know, obviously Paul did not address it. Jesus didn't specifically address it. Moses didn't specifically address it because it wasn't a reality. It's only been in the last couple of decades that technology and science have brought this about. So I think it's an issue that every couple has to wrestle with themselves. This is an issue of conscience. This is an issue that the Bible doesn't speak specifically or directly to. However, what it does speak to is the idea that life begins at conception. That when an egg and a sperm come together, it causes and it creates life. It is not a potential life. It is not an almost life. It is life and it is in the mother's womb. So, so we, need to, we need to value this. And so we're talking about IVF where they artificially get involved with fertilizing an egg and creating embryos. That is a life. This isn't a potential life. This is a life. And I know that uh, a lot of times what doctors will do is they'll do a bunch of fertilized eggs, uh, embryos, which are lives, and then they will potentially, or they'll put a few of them in to the mother's womb. But there, there is, unfortunately, there are several people, that are, millions of people, literally, or millions of cases of this, where frozen embryos are left in cryogenic chambers and never, so these are lives that are just kind of treated as disposable. And I think that if, we, if we're going to, in good conscience, as couples, married couples, say, this is the direction we feel that God has led us down to build our family, that's fine. That's between you and the Lord and your doctor. It's creating life. But you also need to think through the consequences and the ramifications of that. Okay, so if we have 15 embryos and we're only, are, are we ready to have 15 children potentially? Or are we going to only want three children and what are we gonna do with the rest of the embryos? Because these are lives that we create. Are you going to, in some cases, can you adopt them out? Are you willing to exhaust all of them? I think these are the difficult conversations that couples need to uh, deal with the consequences. But in, in my mind, I think that science has uh, done wonders to help couples that are struggling with infertility. This is one of those tools. I just think as Christians, we need to think through all the ramifications and pre be prepared to honor life from conception all the way through. 